Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew's online and conference call worship service. We're glad you're here with us. And when we're able to re-engage as a gathered church, we would love to meet and greet you. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning, and we pray you are blessed during this time.
Good morning, St. Andrews. Let us be called to worship. Come joyful before the Lord. God knows us and loves us. Come prayerfully before the Lord. God sees our concerns, our fears, our sin. Christ has proclaimed God's love and forgiveness for all God's people. Know throughout all of your being that God absolutely loves you. How precious and powerful that knowledge is. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Awesome God, you knew us before we were born. You loved us into life. Open our hearts and our spirits today to hear your word. And upon hearing your word, may we be convinced of our call to ministry and mission throughout the church. Bless us with your presence and your powerful love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This day, we observe the work of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. He was a Baptist minister and a social justice activist who became the most visible spokesperson and leader in the civil rights movement from 1955 until his assassination in 1968. Dr. King is best known for advancing civil rights through nonviolence and civil disobedience. Inspired by his Christian beliefs, and the nonviolent activism of Mahatma Gandhi. We salute his work and commit to the work of making true the dream of a United States that is void of segregation and racism. It's time for our church announcements. Grab a pen and let's mark our calendars. Weekdays at 12.10 p.m. on Facebook and 7 p.m. by Zoom video and conference call, we gather in devotion and prayer for 21 days of prayer and fasting. Check our Facebook page, St. Andrews UMC FTW, or dial into our Zoom conference call number 1346 two four eight seven seven nine nine using meeting ID nine four eight seven zero four eight two six four nine and passcode nine three three four two two to access the meeting. Join us for Sunday school every Sunday morning from nine to ten AM on Zoom phone conference or video call. Each Wednesday at 6.30 a.m., our prayer ministry invites you to the intercessory prayer conference call. Contact the church office or leave a comment here to receive information. You are invited to join us each Wednesday at 7 p.m. for WOW! Word and Worship on Wednesday. Contact the church office at 817-336-2117 or make a note in the comment section now or email info at standrewsftw.org to get information on how to join. If you have a heart for ministry, and would like to use your technical talents to serve God, the media ministry needs you. Email media at standrewsftw.org for more details. Please check our website, social media pages, and your email for upcoming announcements and opportunities. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. As we invite you to a time of giving your tithes and offerings, let us first turn to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter and seventh verse. How many people enjoy getting gifts? 
Christmas, birthdays, Valentine's Day, Easter, graduations, anniversaries. The point is that it's a special thing when someone goes out of their way to get something that you would enjoy and they present it to you as a gift. Gift giving is an exciting and fun way of letting someone know that you care about them. Now, how would it feel if someone came up to you and gave you a gift, but they had a scowl on their face? They made it just plain obvious that they did not want to give you that gift, but that someone made them. They may even grab a hold of that thing so tight that you can't pry it out of their hands. Now, is that truly giving? No. A gift comes from the heart. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So what the Apostle Paul was saying to the church at Corinth was simply this, God loves a cheerful giver, that we should give gifts to God because we love him and because he deserves them. And guess what? In 2 Corinthians 9 and 10, the Spirit by the Apostle says, Now may he who supplies Seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So God will bless us when we sow with a cheerful heart. What an honor to be able to sow cheerfully into the Lord's kingdom and for him to bless us in return. We invite you to give by the Givelify app. You may give by going to our webpage, standrewsftw.org, and pressing the Give button there. You may also mail your gifts in to 522 Missouri Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas, 76104, or you may drop them by the office. We invite you to be a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Lord, I come before you today as a cheerful giver. I'm excited to give into your kingdom, and I believe that you will multiply the seed that's sown and increase increase the fruits of righteousness. I believe and act on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 
pray. Father in heaven, we come this morning entering your gates with thanksgiving, entering your courts with praise. God, we come to bless you. We've come to praise you. God, we've come to magnify your name, for you are truly worthy of all the praise. We thank you, God, that you woke us up this morning, and when we rose, we had our health. We had our strength. You allowed us to wake up in our own home. So we say thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that we were able to dress ourselves. And when we went to the table, there was food on the table. God, you've been good, and we just want to say thank you. Now, God, as we bow, we humble ourselves before your throne, knowing, God, that you are God alone, and all power is in your hand. Father, we cry out for those that are in trouble this morning, we cry out, God, that you make a way out of no way. We ask, God, that you provide for those, Lord, that need help, those that need food, those that need clothing. God, and, and most of all, those that need a Savior. God, we cry out to you. We know that you're able. You're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. So, God, we thank you. You are Jehovah Jireh, the supplier of every need. Now, God, there are those that are suffering with illness. But we thank you, God, that you are our healer. You are the healer of every disease. So we ask you, God, to touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I pray, God, that you bless every household under the sound of my voice. God, you know what we have need of even before we ask. We thank you now for every blessing. And God, now as I begin to, to speak your word, God, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, help me to rightly divide this, your word of truth. And I'll give you praise. I'll give you glory. And I'll give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And amen. Praise God. This morning, I'm going to go a little different in that I'm not going to start exactly with the immediately reading a scripture, but I am going to come from more than one scripture, so I hope you have your Bibles this morning. And if not, while you're getting your Bible, let me first thank Pastor Gibson for the opportunity to stand one more time and share the word with you this morning. And you know, this being the first Sunday, the first month of a new year, it is appropriate that we do some reflection. God has allowed us to see another year, and we thank him. Our gratitude should lead us to seek to do better, to live our lives more pleasing to him. You know, we can reflect and things that need changing, we can make those changes. And that's why I'm excited about the series that we're doing, First Things First. And Pastor started it off talking about, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all its righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And then, you know, when we put God first, everything else will fall in order. And then last week, Brother Masters came and he addressed our health and told us how God is concerned not only about our bodies, but about our souls. So this week, we want to look at relationships. So that's what I'm going to be talking about this morning is relationships. What does God expect of us concerning our relationships? What does God expect as we are living day to day, interacting with different people, you, we want to look at it from a biblical perspective. You know, as we understand that a relationship is defined as how two items or two objects, two things interact with each other. So what does the Bible have to say concerning our relationships? Well, we'll start this morning by looking first 
at family relationships. What does God expect in our relationships with family? You know, when we look at society, we can witness that there has been a breakdown in the family. Uh-huh, a breakdown of the family unit. And, you know, divorce is at an all-time high, while people getting married is at an all-time low. You know, weddings used to be events that we attended frequently, but now the family dynamics have changed and the structure is different. So we're seeing children now that, that are abused and abandoned, and, and we're seeing seniors that have been neglected. We're seeing what Jesus described as mothers against daughters and, and, and fathers against sons. Amen? But so therefore, there's a need for us to mend and restore family relationships. But we have good news for you this morning because we can always look at the word of God for guidance. Amen. For, for the Bible says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So let's look at what the word has to say about family. So we pray that scriptures will bring us clarity. Now, before we begin to read, let's, let's get this understanding. We have to first know that biblical principles are different from worldly points of views. I'm saying that God's word, biblical principles, won't necessarily align with our politically correct views. Amen? And it might not even align with legal points of view. But his word may not be popular, and it may not be always understood, but those who belong to God will not only hear and read, but will obey his word, okay? The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And if we belong to God, we understand that the word really is not up for our approval because it's already settled in heaven. Can you say amen? You know, the flower fades, the grass withers, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. And so as we look at God's word this morning, if we will hear what he is saying, God will set things in order. Because all of the dysfunction that I just talked about that we're seeing in society, it is simply a result of disobedience to God's law. Amen. If you'll turn with me now to Colossians, the, three chap the third chapter, Colossians, the third chapter, and we're going to start with that 18th verse and go down to verse 21. And we pray that you'll hear the word of the Lord. Verse 18 reads, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Now, well, let's look at that 18th verse. We're talking about family relationships, amen. The first word that strikes us is wives submit. And if we're honest about that, a lot of times we have problems with that word right there. But I found out that that happens because a lot of people don't really understand what that word submit means. But I thank God that he let me live long enough to get an understanding of that. The word submit really is not relegating with ladies to a status of a slave. It's not making you a servant. But what it is saying is when you submit, it means you will honor when you submit, it means you will listen to. When you submit, it means that he can be head of the household. Amen? And, and I'm reading from a contemporary English version. It says, a wife must put her husband first. This is her duty as the follower of the Lord. You see, when we begin to understand that when God created man, he took one of his ribs and made woman. And you see, the rib comes from the side. So that makes us his helpmate. 
That means that, you know, the ribs protect the organs. So that means that he is our protector. I'm talking about the husband and the wife submitting to him. And so really and truly, if you understand what submission is, it means I'm going to listen. It means I'm going to respect. It means I'm going to reverence. You know, he's my king, and I've been married a long time. He's my king, but guess what? Not only is he my king, I'm his queen. Amen. Somebody say amen right there. So it's a submission takes strength, but it is what the Lord intends for us to do. Now, what that means, we're both grown, but I love him enough to yield to him. I love him enough to support him. That's what all is saying to us, ladies. All right, and then next it moves to husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. You know, husbands, it says love. And when we love somebody, we don't mind spending time with them. When we love somebody, we, don't, we care about them and we keep their best interests at heart. Amen. So I'm talking about family relationships. And you see, when, when the parents respect and honor each other, when they love each other, when the children can see mom and dad on a united front, they can't help but experience a loving, nurturing environment, the one that God ordained. Somebody say amen. And, in, in, and, and then in, in verse 20, it says, children, obey your parents in all things. I want you to know if you're a child, God expects you to listen to your, past, to your parents. Okay, we all know some teenagers, and, and, and most of them listen more to their peers than they do their parents. And, and, and the reason why this happens is they sometimes feel that the parents don't really understand them. They feel that the parents really don't know what they're talking about. But I need to say to our young people this morning that, that your parents have been on this earth longer than you have. And they've had some life experiences. So they do know some things. They know more than what you think they might know. Also, we need to understand that God is pleased when children obey their parents. You see, your parents have been where you're trying to go. So they can tell you some things if you will listen. And, and, and it said, Paul said that God is pleased when you obey your parents. And then parents, you know, the Bible says foolishness is in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction drives it away. So just know that if you don't correct them, then they won't know the right way. If you don't teach them, if you don't train them, parents, then they will lack the moral compass that they need. And see, what happens is when everyone in the family has a position. We all have positions in the family, the mother, the father, the children. And when we all stand in our places, when the parents are parents, when mom is mom, dad is dad, and they are uh, teaching their children, then we can fill our roles and we will see healthy, godly relationships within the family. Can you say amen? And the next thing I want to talk about not only does God ordain healthy family relationships, he calls us to a higher standard in our relationships with others. So we talked about, we're doing relationships. We talked about relationships in the family. Now we're talking about our relationships with others. Do you know that the Bible addresses believers as sisters and brothers? And we all who belong to God, we handle our relationships differently than the people that are unbelievers do, don't we? Amen. Yeah, yeah. See, we are guided by the word of God. See, we understand do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We understand forgive and ye shall be forgiven. And, and, and so some things that might help us out with our relationship with others can be found. Excuse me, in Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 27 and 28. If you'll go there with me, Luke, the sixth chapter, the 27th and 28th verse. And it says, and this is Jesus speaking. Chapter six, there it is. Okay, but I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. 
Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Now, we already understand that what Christ is saying is not what we're hearing on the news. It's not what we would expect people that don't go to church necessarily to agree with. But you, we understand that God's principles do not align with the ideologies of the word. But Jesus says here in verse 27, to all them that will hear, to all them that will hear. And, and, and a lot of people are listening, but they're not hearing. You see, in the classroom every day, I see children on a screen. They're looking right at me, and I'm thinking they're listening to me. They're, uh, they are focused. Their attention is on me. But when I give the test, that's when I find out the people that were listening and the people that really heard what I was saying. Amen. So Christ wants us to hear what he's saying. God wants us to internalize his words. He wants us to live what we are reading. If we want better relationships with others, we have to hear what Jesus is saying. He said, love your enemies. You see, he doesn't want us to fall into the trap of they hate me, so I'm going to hate them. They just curse me out, so I'm going to curse them out. But what he wants us to do is pray for them. That, that, that's something to think about, isn't it? Pray for them. You see, the reason we pray is because when we pray, it involves God in the situation. And how many of you know that things have to get better when God intervenes? Amen? When we remember what just happened at our nation's capital, it really hurts us to know that here we are in 2021, still dealing with some of the issues and the wrongs that we are seeing. And, and people are reacting to that a lot of different ways. But Jesus said, pray for them. You see, only God can change the hearts of evil men. Let me say that again. Only God can change the hearts of evil men. See, God is able to make a person lay down their weapon and pick up a Bible. Amen. God is the one that's able to, to, to change hearts and to regulate minds. Can you say amen? He says, pray for them, pray for them. And, and, and we are called to love them and to pray for them. And so if we want to see better relationships, whether it is in our family, whether it's on our job, whether it's the relationships between races, we are going to have to do it God's way. We as Christians are called to walk in love. And that means we have to be patient with people. It means we have to forgive people. You know, let it go, move on. And, 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 and then the other side of that coin is this. We have to be humble when we are the person that has wronged someone. We have to be humble enough to say, I'm sorry. To say, you know, I was wrong. You, 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 the Bible says, don't think of ourselves more highly than we ought. We have to come to the realization that we all make, make mistakes and there are no perfect people. So if we'll do these things, if we'll forgive, if we'll pray, if we'll walk in love, if we'll have patience, those are just a few suggestions that will build our relationships with others. All right, we've talked about family relationships. We've talked about relationships with others. The last relationship I want to bring to our attention as I close is the most important relationship we can ever have. I'm saying if you get this relationship in order, the others will naturally align themselves. And that is our relationship with the Lord. Amen. You know, Jesus summed it all up in Matthew, the 22nd chapter and the 37th verse. He says, Thy shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Did you hear the words heart, soul, and mind? That means that we have to love him with our everything, everything. God has to be first in our lives. And, and, and you know that that we love, we don't mind spending time with. Amen? 
You know, but it makes me wonder, how is our commitment to God? Do we find that a 45-minute broadcast is sufficient time to spend with God for our week? When we attend church, whether we are attending in person or whether we are virtual, do we come to worship? Or are we just allowing the service to play as we go about our daily activities? You see, when we are in a relationship, when you love somebody, you spend time with them because you want to know more about them. You want to get to know them. Amen? And this... and. and, and it's, I want to know, it, we need to ask ourselves this question. When we want a relationship to grow, we seek to get to know that person. How much time, here's the question, how much time are we spending seeking after and learning about the Lord? How much time are we spending studying his word? How much time are we spending in prayer to the God that we say we love? If you couldn't answer those questions, then God is calling you to a relationship with him. You see, God knew that our relationship with him was going to need mending. He knew that our relationship with him was going to need restoration. So what he did, he sent his son to die on a cross. You see, Jesus came here and he walked this earth 33 years. And at the end of that 33 years, they, they, the story goes that they led him from judgment hall to judgment hall. And even though he was innocent, they condemned him to crucifixion. And we have to understand that crucifixion was the, the worst death. It was reserved for the very worst criminals of society at that time. And here's an innocent Christ going to the cross for us. They led him. They whipped him all night long. They led him up a hill. They, they, they hung him on the cross. They put nails in his hand. They put nails in his feet. They pierced him in his side. And he died for your sins and he died for my sins. And the, the Bible says they buried him in a borrowed tomb. They, it was a borrowed tomb because he was not going to stay there. But three days later, he arose from the grave. We ask, why did he do it? He did it so that we could have a relationship with him. And since he rose, he's our savior, he's our Lord, he's our intercessor. And he's calling all that we're here to a relationship with him. Can you say amen? He says, come, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls he wants you to have a relationship with him he says behold I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me do you hear how intimate that is he wants a relationship with us. Will you open the door of your heart? Will you surrender today? Will you say yes to Jesus? Give him a try. Begin your new relationship with the Lord. If that's you, or if you just desire prayer, we will pray with you. Call the church at 817-336-2117. And someone will contact you. Or you can simply put it in the comment section and we will reach out to you. You can start off 2021 with God. 2021 can be better because of your relationship with the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are a God that restores. We thank you, God that you are God that's able to regulate minds, to fix hearts. We thank you, God, that we can cast every care on you because you care for us. So we come now, God, look into the hills from which cometh our help. All our help comes from you. We cried, God, for those that would like to begin a relationship with you. We pray, God, 
that open minds and open hearts would receive you. We thank you that you already died because you loved us. We pray now, God, for every family. We pray that relationships, oh God, that have been broken, that have been stormy, that you will show us and give us the wisdom how to repair them, what to say, what to do, that we can be pleasing in your sight. We pray, God, for the relationships that we have with others on our jobs, in our communities. We pray, God, that you help us to let our light so shine that others may see you in us and glorify you, see good works and glorify you. We pray, oh God, we surrender, we say yes to your will, yes to your way, oh God. Those that are receiving you now, we say yes. Those that would desire a relationship, those, God, that may not have the nerves to call in, we pray and we thank you that they receive you and that you're right there with them in that place. Yes, God, you are welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Thank you, God. We know that you're able to save to the utmost. So we thank you. We praise you. We bless you. We magnify your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Hallelujah.
thank you for joining us for service this morning. We pray that something was said or done that will bless you and help you along the way. Uh, please tune in to our Bible studies on Wednesday nights. You may look on our website to get information for the time. Also, there's a prayer line that happens Wednesday mornings that you can be a part of. We also have going on now our 21 days of fasting. So if you will take time and view that each day on our page. Let us receive our benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. As you go, tell the world.